Hello, viewers. I'm SB, and welcome back to Allah Yan Endless. So, uh, this is everything in, uh, everything in the world. This is all of the things that we have in the entire world. This is how good he thinks that deal is. This has, look at, look at this. Dust driven, dust driven distillery, difference engine, town criers. This is everything except our cities. Not good enough. Our whole treasury, all of our resources, a declaration of war on his enemies, nothing. So no, there will be no peace. Not today. Which is very bad for us. Like, really, it's so bad for us. Because it pretty well means that uh, we lose that city. I just don't, I don't think we can hold him back. He only has two units in his assault force. And they are only the Kakators. These are the good ones, but they're still a lot less dangerous than Riders. But he has brought a hero in now. And of course, we still have to deal with whatever's left in this garrison. Red's forces seem to have mostly backed off, which is a frustrating change of events. And, uh... I think we may have come this far. Only to meet our end. If we lose Glicka... We will lose seven population, and the attendant science and so I mean, I guess it's not that much. We will soldier on. This one's going all the way to the bitter end, but uh, I'm starting to think that bitter end may not be too far in the future, actually. Thirteen turns to serum. Pink just needs to die. We just need to get Pink to die somehow. All right, we do have to. We should like actually have this guy do something. Hey, go get those pearls. All right. So we'll fight one more time. The dredges are coming in. Hopefully we can get them into this army before the attack happens next turn. Uh, we will not have anybody to defend the city, sadly. What would it take to finish this guy? 935? Wow. Okay, we can make that happen. Um, what, we sell one... Yeah, one, <laughs> one adamantium. Okay. So we have a monk for... Very under-equipped Delvers. And a hero at less than half health. This is the world we live in. We can rage against it, or we can accept it and just try to do our best within its confines. I mean, even if we do rage against it, we're still going to have to accept it and do our best to live within its confines. Although, hey, Dark Form. Dark Form is helpful. Go, Dredges, go! Seriously, run! Run, you guys! Sprint! Okay. Well, that was the best we could possibly hope for. Awful lot of red units. With access to my borders, by the way, allowed to pass through. Can't be bothered. Yep, Guardian's still in range. Riders from the... Riders from the city. We might be able to hold out just based on the number of troops that we have. It may it may take him more than six turns of attacking to kill this many of us if we're careful. Yeah, Gleka. Um I guess make a monk. Sure. Ah, <sighs> on the plus side. Winter is good for us in a number of ways. What's today's new winter effect? Plus 100% battle XP. That's a cool one. There's nothing we can do here. Look at all of these troops. What are you doing? Why aren't you attacking? Help, man! I thought we were friends! Okay, here we go. I'm not a big fan of the strategy that I'm employing. I just want everybody to understand. This thing where we hide in the back, not my not my first choice. Um, I would love to just go after him, start way up on him and just fight, but this guardian is just such a pain. Like, it's the riders that are going to kill us, but the guardian does make... Standing up on him a little awkward. Well, our hero is in a position where he gets to just, like... He's cliffed off from everybody. 
this whole battlefield is very different during the winter with the ice. We have a much more advantageous position in the summer. Alright, well, we're gonna hold position. Make them come to us, occupy the reinforcement flags. At this point, you've seen it a number of times. Unfortunately, even though these battles are not very interesting, we have to do them manually, because the AI would, uh, the AI would charge. And that would be disastrous. Boy, that sound played for an awful lot longer than it needed to. All right, all right, guys, with your healing. Let's try to focus on the one that has the lowest health. Ooh, 156, that's not bad. If we can get a couple more of those, we might actually kill him. Ow! Three. We have three health. Alright. Remember, we'd like to attack instead of counterattacking, since our monks are in dark form. Oh, could we get this kill? We could, but we don't. And our hero is probably dead. I assume that the uh, their hero will execute him. Yep. All right, so here come the dredges. But I think we we might actually survive this, depending on how they move. If our last we have uh, we have four dredges coming in, they have to kill a dredge here this turn and a dredge here next turn. So depending on how they move, they might not actually be able to do that since the only space you can access from is here. So we might just survive. And they're very focused. Oh, they're hero, right. Their hero will help. Yeah, no, we're not going to make it. Ah, well, we had a good run. So now that we've lost Gleka, I have to think. I guess it doesn't really change anything, strategy-wise. We're just we're doing the same thing we were doing before, just um, you know, fifteen percent less. And Pink has, in the face of overwhelming odds, completely ignored the existential threat that will certainly cause him to lose, so that he could make me have a worse game, which is something that the AI always seems to do. Given a choice between fighting another AI and fighting you, they will always choose to crap on your game. Which is kind of, um, it's kind of transparently gamey in a way that's a little frustrating sometimes. Alright, well. We weren't getting enough science from the city for that to even change the number of turns on our tech. Now Masuarim is in trouble. Masuarim will be the next target. We need to get, like, a proper alliance going with red. Let's get the ability to buy stuff out more effectively. Uh, that's a little expensive. You know what? Let's do it. Let's take the extra science. Alright, so here's that army. I suppose this guy needs to move now. Why don't you go over here? Get somewhere where they maybe don't have direct vision of you. That's all that it really takes. And we need an army to defend Masuar. So, it just finished whatever it was doing. It has no industry. Jesus. Alright, we need to buy some industry for this city. Canal systems are not terrible. <clears throat> Canal locks? Honestly, might be worth doing. Yeah, let's just buy the canal locks. That'll give us an increased ability to produce things. It's our weakest city, so it needs the most boost. And then Guaron. Uh... Did not canceling that monk before battle mean I lo I lost the I think I lost the stuff the resources that I paid for the price of that monk. 
That's a bummer. So, do I want to... What do I want to do? I could buy more resources. That's an option. What does it cost to buy some, some adamantium or palladium? They're both at minimum demand. So 10 is 293? Yeah, alright. Is that not enough? Oh, I don't have 72 dust. You sure are right about that? That's okay, I can just assign it next turn. Alright, <laughs> let's get back into the ocean. We're starting to accumulate pearls again, but at this point... I don't know. At this point, I'm not convinced of their uh, value. We could do pearl stockpiles, I guess. Actually, that's a pretty good idea. Do I have that uh, that tech bot? <laughs> Alright, this is what we'll be using our pearls for now. Uh, how close are we on this? I wish it gave me a better list. Let's let's check the cities. Let's give. Do you have? Nope, no tower. Okay, Renar. How about you? But it, I don't even know if it would be over here or over here. In either case, there isn't one. The ten each. All right, Guaran. Okay, Guaran has one, and they appear on that side. Masuarim. No. Okay, so we have to build them everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, this place has one. Also, what an impressive expansion this list. So we need to build three of these things to move the faction quest along. At this point, it's not vitally important or anything. Red takes Milan the next turn. And Red has an awful lot of soldiers running through our territory now, which makes me happy. That might give us, uh, might give us a chance here. It might be hard for Pink to, to lay siege to Mesoarim now. <laughs> That's basically what I'm hoping. What is this? Is this a settler? Are you settling? He's gonna, as soon as he, as soon as he has adjacency, he's just gonna settle everything. Well, we've expended, we've extended his lifespan by some. I really wish I could have held him. It's just... It's, it's so many troops. When you fight an AI on this level, they bring to bear so many troops. We're rebuilding our army slowly. We should probably buy our hero back. Actually. It's not that expensive to do. Um, let's have him form an army on Masuarim. And then go get those pearls. Or it might actually be better to do it on Guaran. Why can I not select thing? Okay, because it still wasn't my turn yet. That's why. Alright. So how many is this? This is seven pearls. That's enough to start one more tower. Alright, Red, go forth. Smash him. I'll say this. I feel like Red has earned this victory. <laughs> this is my Tower of Fidelity. It's, uh, you know, it's not that impressive. Tower of Truth, rather. That's right, I bought the cheap one. I thought it was going to be larger. Sort of fiercer looking. Anyway, this city didn't have one, right? No, this city does have one. I just looked at it. I just looked at it. <clears throat> Go ahead and finish the dust refinery, but then, but then it's time for business. Okay, this city doesn't have one for sure. Let's bang that out now that they have their. Uh... Here it is. Now that they have the, all of their extra industry. Yep, should we go pretty quickly. And we need four more. Four more pearls. 
That's only two pearls. I'm not going to go out of my way to get it. This is only two pearls as well, but it's in the direction of more pearls. See, there's a there's an okay deposit over here, but I don't want to, you know, tempt fate. Actually, it kind of looks like she's coming for me. 7.1 move. Well, there's no reason to run now. We can afford to get attacked, retreat, and then bail to the ocean. Luxuries are still running. Oh, we lost our uh, Dust Orchid. We can correct that. Yep, that's what happened. Okay. That's fine. I guess this guy is going on Pearl Duty. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Alright, so Renar... Renar needs one still. Do I want to use this settler now? I had plans, you guys. I had such plans. Tanelm is gone. I mean, we could go, like, take Joyak. Or even Shorel for the Dust Orchid. That's probably better. But Doyok has Mithrite. You know what? Let's let's get the Settler out there. We'll get on the ocean. We'll move in that direction. We'll see what happens. See what options we have. At this point, I don't think setting on another city is going to really affect our approval ratings. On account of the... Uh, you know, the loss of a previous city, and the fact that we picked up a an approval, an expansion approval tech very recently in our negotiations. Uh, two, two, is there a bigger deposit somewhere up north? Not really. No big deposits in Maswaram either. Yeah, alright, go get the two and the two. Has to run kind of a goofy path because of all of the cliffs. There's a lot of weird, irregular cliffs around our uh, around our coastline. Okay, so we need a couple more pearls. We're actually almost done with this step of the quest. It is only turn 163. We're really wailing on it, man. So Red's huge army. It really does feel like he waited, right? Until we lost Gleka before he swept in, and all of a sudden. Okay. Out of curiosity, what tech... Blood Brothers, are we? What tech did you just pick up? Self-driving plows, you don't say. <coughs> are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Because I'm thinking a thing. What would you say to a technology trade? Perhaps, uh... In exchange for open borders. <laughs> I doubt that would work anymore. Um, but we're going to find out. So I'm going to save the game right quick. I apologize if, uh, if this feels cheesy. But I'm really curious if it'll work. I, I, can't, I can't not know. I'm closing my borders. How dare you. We really don't have the influence to pull this off. I think only 670. How dare you? Seriously, though, I was just fucking with you. You wanna... You wanna trade? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, could you hook a brother up with some resources, maybe, too? You have 91,000 dust? Why do you have 91,000? Okay, can I... Can I have, like... How about 2,000? No? I have one? You give me one. I'm just kind of curious. A hundred. That's not what a hundred looks like. No, he would not get. I, yeah. Eight turns. 
Eight turns, you guys. We just have to not get wiped out. Are we back to being Blood Brothers? Okay. Contract to its advantage. That's what happened, right? That's what everybody saw? Contract to its advantage. Okay. Science stockpiles. Go! Screw the quest. Uh, who's building the thing? Do we all finish building? Yeah, okay. I can't I can't cancel any buildings to get a refund on our pearls. Go forth. Get me more pearls. Oh, that's a three. That's a three pip. Uh, is that a three right there? It is. That one's eight. Nice. Okay, well, it's the cheesiest ending ever to a game. You know, hold on. I haven't won anything yet. Let's let's stow that kind of talk until we see a victory screen. Then I will reprimand myself for having uh, not cheated, not cheated exactly, but maybe taken advantage of someone who is clearly suffering from some kind of inability to measure the relative value of strategies. Uh, okay, so actually we have places that don't have anything building right now. We should rectify that. I mean, there's nothing we can really do that matters, right? In Endless Legend, as in life, nothing, nothing we can really do that matters. Is there any city that is not all, all guns firing on science? Let's see if we can get one turn off of this tech. That's one turn. Okay, seven turns. Plus, we got that stockpile coming. Uh, we should be buying stuff. Uh, we, we ran out of Dust Orchid. Dust Orchid gives science. So let's make sure that we have that coming. You know, like, listen. Oh, I didn't need to buy that much. We don't have enough cities for the boosters to be that expensive anymore. Uh, we don't actually even need wine anymore, which is kind of cool. That's sort of a cool thing. How long is the Moonleaf booster going to run? Five more turns. Honestly, if we get lucky enough, that might be the rest of the game. Oh. Hell yeah. And let's buy these. And we, we will expend the industry stockpiles to create science stockpiles more efficiently. And then one in... The capital and one in Jamaj. Let's see if we can get these royal universities down to a reasonable. Okay, we don't actually need that many science stockpiles. In case you're not aware, uh, if you spend, you can only get the benefit of one science stockpile per turn. If you spend ten of them, it will do one per turn for each of your next ten turns. So we actually only need. Uh, we've got one running for this turn already. We need six more, one of which will be completed next turn, two more the turn after that. So we actually only need three more stockpiles beyond what's currently in production. The pearl stockpiles are very cheap, very efficient way to turn industry and pearls into any other resource. I'm confident we'll get there. Um, it kind of doesn't matter, I guess. It didn't actually change our... <laughs> I am very close to a scientific victory. I'm a real, uh, a real research powerhouse over here, you guys. Let's keep that running. Uh, yeah. Whatever, man. Have at it. All right. So I know that we're not actually gaining a lot by, by having the stockpiles running, because I can uh, I can see. I, I too have eyes. But, you know, something horrible could happen. We want to we wanna build up every bit of science that we have available to us. So uh, out of curiosity, what's our, our empire output per turn right now is 7,700. And how does that compare to the AI? Uh, this is unlocked technologies. Here we are. Red is producing somewhere north of 20k. 
judging by the distance between the bars here and then that, I'd say probably close to 25. This is probably like 24 at least. We're pushing a, a healthy 7. And we might, <laughs> we might win the game. Could happen. He also might just win the science victory a turn before we do. You know, that's still a thing that also could happen. And I could have, if I was any good at the game, put some effort into stopping that, you know, um, spies or something. Nope. Didn't. Didn't. <sighs> Let's be honest. I'm What I'm doing already is, is close enough to cheating that I feel bad. <sighs> There's a school of thought that says that anything that you can do in a game is fair play. If the developers didn't want you to do a thing, they would make it impossible. You can tell, probably, from the intonation, the sound of my voice, oh no, my borders, uh, that I'm not 100% subscribed to that school. I have been a game developer, not, uh, not anything, listen, not anything you played, but I have made games. And uh, I understand, it's very difficult, especially in a game of even, even a very small amount of complexity to stamp out all of the things that you didn't mean to put in. Five turns. So I know that it's not... I guess it comes down to an argument of intent. It's not the same thing, I guess, what I'm saying. I'm saying that the there's a difference between what's in the game and what the developers intended to be the game, but I guess this argument is really that it doesn't matter what the developers intended. The game is what it is. Sort of a, a... I think this is an argument that Dave Serlin would probably be a fan of. The game is what it is, and you have to play it in that state. You can't be like, well, but maybe they meant to do X. Well, they didn't do X. X is not what we have on the table. You know, he's, he's not wrong. I'm rationalizing. I'm comfortable with it. Are you guys comfortable with it? If you're not comfortable with it, leave a comment. I'll, uh, I'll read it. I'll feel bad. Think about that before you leave the comment. That it's gonna make me feel bad. Alright. We're gonna press the end turn button a couple more times here. I think we only need one or two more stockpiles to be all the way... stockpiled through to the end of the game. Oh, I should've used this on the capital. Let's get that running. What's this? Oh shit, they're gonna get an expansion victory. Oh my god, they're gonna get an expansion victory before I can end the game. Where's an army? Do I have an army? Uh, oh no, my army! I flung them to the winds! Oh, what was I thinking? Okay, uh... You have to be done this turn. You have to be done last turn. We have to go siege Shirelle, <laughs> so that Red can't get to it. You're not that far away, but you're a settler. You're... Oh, you have nine move. <laughs> go, go, go. If Red if Red claims Shirelle before we, uh, before we win our ill-gotten science victory, I'm going to feel like a huge idiot. So, um, this is not a great example of how to, like, how to win what you might consider a fair game of Endless Legend against an AI. But, but, listen, there's something to be said here still. A real thing happened here, ooh, he's pushing on that economic victory too. He's really doing it. There's absolutely nothing I can do to speed up my science, right? Oh no, there's totally stuff still. You don't have an Imperial News Network or an Arts Council. I could buy one of those. How much? 30... Th okay, well... That is maybe not happening. I might be able to trade or sell... I have 110... No, you don't care about that. 13... 9.7... So I would be able... Yeah, I'm not going to get anywhere close to... I don't think there is anything I can do. I think we just have to hope. 
I mean, I don't think there's anything I can do as far as speeding up the serum. What I can definitely do is try to interfere with the attack on Shirelle. If we can get there before Red gets there and siege the city, Red won't be able to attack the city. And Red won't be able to attack us to break the siege because we're buddies. He'd have to declare war. And he can't just declare war straight out of Cold War. He has to take a turn to, uh, or straight out of peace. He has to take a turn to Cold War us first. The city is not under siege currently, but he has a unit right there. So we have to, yeah, we have to do this thing right away and attack Siege the City. This is real gamey. This has gotten very uh, immersion breaking. <laughs> I don't know. Go get those ones. Stop asking me. Stop asking me for orders. I don't. Here, go to here. Consider that with your time. Just everybody... Everybody get three turns of orders so that you don't have to ask me any more questions. I don't know. I don't know. Everybody just do stuff. Alright. We can do this. We can do this. Go, go, go. Get there before the red guy does. The, uh, the AI doesn't usually move their units right away at the beginning of the turn. We usually have a second. We just have to hope that our unit moves fast enough. We have to cover a lot more distance. Nope. He got there. <sighs> In a sense, I'm very disappointed. In another sense, I'm actually pretty happy that wasn't the way that, that I got the win. Because then I was going to have to come up with an elaborate rationalization for why that was an okay way to end the series. Where are we at? 31 minutes? So I could actually have won this, if you consider the manipulating the AI to trade you endgame techs a win. Because I could have, remember I did talk about it, I could have hired a spy quite some time ago and implanted him in Red's Empire and uh, lowered their science output by a significant amount. So the reason I mentioned that is just that, you know, you should... Uh, I was practicing with the Forgotten. The Forgotten are next. Listen, if we ever get through this Elayi thing, the Forgotten are next. I'm expecting that to be pretty exciting. Okay, impossible. Nope, I was playing on impossible. Endless, normal, yeah. <sighs> the point I was making, bringing up the, fa the spy and the fact that I didn't do it, is that if you have an idea, and it seems like a good way to maybe contribute some victory, just go ahead and do it. You can't see what's in the future. You can't tell what you won't need. Take actions. You know, do your best to work in the direction of a victory, even if you're not sure that it will matter, because it might matter. You can't, you can't know that it won't. If you do know that it won't, then obviously don't do it. But, um, like I said, I wouldn't have been super happy about that victory. Although... I would have been happy to be playing with a race other than the Alayi. I'm not going to lie. I'm, uh, I, I've am been a little discouraged by the way this series has gone. <sighs> I thought we had it there, too. I thought we had a really good game going. It's possible that I overestimated the uh, effectiveness of an Alayi city. It's possible that I can't stop expanding as quickly as I stopped expanding there. It's possible... That I just didn't, you know, I did stop building um, Garths earlier than I said I was going to, and maybe that would have made up the difference. Let's have a look around. 10, 8, 17, 6. I sure want more population than I'm going to get off of 10 food, but this is a pretty incredible total number of resources. That's hard to argue with. Let's see if the region has anything that's a little bit more... Okay, that's compelling. A four food anomaly next to a six industry anomaly. What a what do the settles around that look like? Nine fourteen, ten eight. And this was this is also ten eight. This is low on both industry and food, lower than I would like. I would not consider this a good start. That said, you know, sometimes you don't get a good start. Sometimes you have to struggle on. 
it's just hard to struggle on when you're at such a disadvantage. I mean, we're playing from behind for the entire game. Earth Tower's cool. Our home region has a lot of anomalies in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's unusual. Okay, well, whatever we do, I'm definitely putting our hero over here. Hey, let me... Alright. It's a little reticent to let me select my hero. Five glass steel, that's cool. Boy, this is interesting. I almost wonder if I want to move my settler over to here. What is this? This is Nidya. Here we have Kazanji. Maybe I want to move my settler into a new region. I don't usually do that because, um, just as in Civ, every turn that you don't have your empire started is a turn of early engine that you're falling behind, and the effect is magnified over the course of the game. Uh, but also in this game, you are rapidly losing resources when your city's not up. This is a lot of resources. Three anomalies is a very impressive start. 914 is not better. Six. Well, that's horrible. 1488. 14 is a little bit more in the, in the neighborhood of what I'd like to see food-wise. But this location has actual zero industry, which is, makes it a little hard to stomach. 914. 10, 12, 6, 5. 10, 8, 17, 6. I think we do this. It has almost double the industry. And we can get this space with a, uh, with a Garth early. That lets us get this eventually, too. I like having two anomalies that have approval on them <laughs> in our early city. Yeah, it's not ideal, but it's not bad. <sighs> I'm trying to think. You know what, maybe I would rather do this, buy the first couple of things with, you know, just use dust from the, uh... Because this is going to give me 10 approval, which means that we'll be happy by default instead of content, which means we're going to have plus 15 all resource, plus 15% all resources if we start here. Yeah, that's got to be right. It's got to be right. So the base level of our empire is happy, which is 15% dust and science from the empire level, and in the city, plus 15% food and industry. I don't know, guys. I don't, I honestly don't know what's better. So do I want to do five point five total population, seven total memorial, or the other way around? I think I want to do it this way. We're going to rely on dust. So I have two ruins in my starting region. Oh, I actually can't see this tile. This might be a ruin. Um, but I have a unit within a turn's move of each of them, so let's see where it puts our sky fin. Oh, I should probably set up a research. So obviously we want this. Part of the value of doing it this way is that I get to pound through the first couple of researches very quickly. 17 science per turn is, uh, is nice. Alright. We have to consider this uh, a very strong potential settle. Okay, yep. Hero goes back. Let's get that sky fan out. Alright, 80 dust is our next reward. I might have known that already. It's possible that that's always the same. So let's have the Skyfin go and see what's in that space. Nothing of interest, it's just a forest. And then we're going to have him come over here and parlay on his next turn. Our hero will similarly set up for a parlay. Uh, if you are a person who is good at playing Alayi, please feel free to give some advice in the comments. Clearly there's something I'm not grasping. I like to. I would like to get through this. I would like to be victorious. At this point, it would uh, it would feel 
really good to be victorious. <laughs> but man, there is something that I am not grasping here. Some something missing from my understanding. Uh, let's try to. Okay, I'm actually gonna just stay put. We'll move to this thing next turn. Parlay. Yeah. All right, so let's take a quick peek. Are we on Pacify Villages? No, destroy 10 armies. Okay, we're probably not getting this. Wealth Harvester uh, gives emeralds this time. Not not compelling. I'm not going to worry too much about these then. We're not going not gonna to go out of our way to get them. All right, let's parlay with 100 villages. Give them 10 gold, man. Okay. That's compelling. We can do that very easily and get 15 gold. We were thinking about colonizing this region anyway. Oh my. Oh wow. Look at that. Holy crap. The city we build there would not be one for the ages as far as expansion goes. But think about the early contribution of this uh, this one hex city. That's really something. Okay, we gotta colonize this region in a real hurry. They're gonna get pacified for free. They're gonna give us gold. It's better than for free. They're actually gonna pay us. There's gold extractors. Or there's gold to, on which to build extractors. Gold in the wild. Yeah, Tychest is next. Tychest is next and it's like soon. Oh, Delvers! You guys, it's like Christmas. It's like Christmas morning. Um, do we cough up the gold? Or do we cough up the dust now? Let's uh, let's run a little bit more of the turn. Oh, bummer! I gave up a bunch of points of movement for you guys. Okay, uh, within five turns, search over here. We have no Draken player, and we don't know who that is. It's pink, I mean, we know that, but we don't, we don't know what faction that is. Well, let's just hope it's not forgotten. So the question is, do I want to pop my hero over here to get this right now? The answer has to be yes, right? And then the second question is, do I use the gold from getting this? Let's have a let's let's spend a little bit of our move. I want to keep one point of move. Okay, Tychus is a large region, with a lot of cool stuff in it. Oh, actually, I guess the hero doesn't need to keep a point of move. Let's get one more tiles worth of information here, and then we warp the hero down to here. Can I not split the unit out of the, uh... Because it doesn't actually remove... Yeah, the unit still has, you can see, four of six points of movement left. How do I eject this unit from the army? No world positions where it is possible to spawn a new army? Really? Alright, well, I guess we're not doing it until next turn. That's strange. That is uh, not exactly how I expected that to go. I think... It has to be right to spend the gold as a booster, and then once we get the gold from Tychest, use that gold to pacify them. Well, except the pacification is a point of population. Hmm. Let's buy this out. We're going to start our mill foundry next turn, so... Ooh. Let's see if we can get enough dust to buy that mill foundry out real fast, and then build a settler. <laughs> wow, a lot of ruins out here. So that was 40 dust, this one was also dust. I can tell due to my ability to read short numbers. I can look up and know, hey, we didn't have 106 before. Okay, so there's red. I think this is a really great start but it could totally be spoiled by 
jackassery, you know? If we get, like, two neighbors who are really aggressive or something... Let's do it. <clears throat> Alright. I don't need to talk to you about this. You know what's happening here. We've done it a bunch of times. We're gonna embarrass this guy and make him look very, uh, very dumb indeed. We do have to explicitly instruct our hero to participate in the battle. You can just stay put. We get a free turn of doing very little damage. Now, the murder. Wow, he uh, he's gonna straight up kill my hero. Okay, that's a little better. I feel like this has gone better in the past. He has 7 health. Please don't hit me for 60. <laughs> okay, well, what does that mean? Did I win? Hey, hey, hey. I defeated the Alpha Male. I absolutely defeated the Alpha Male. He is defeated. I saw it. Well... That's very annoying. That certainly negatively affects my... My banana start. How's dude hitting for 60? Does he know what turn it is? Alright, so we need... The basic amenities pretty badly. We're gonna need food in the capital. Like, a lot of it. We're gonna need... This stuff, like... We can afford to push the library off a little bit, because we have a lot of science from tiles. Let's see if these guys would like to negotiate now. Destroy that village, you say? Why, I'd be happy to. That actually sounds lovely. <sighs> we should try to get vision of this whole region, probably, so that we can make some more informed settling decisions. I have to say, I'm very annoyed by the way that went. Also, we totally defeated him. Now, now we're being taunted openly. Uh, what am I doing? I need to look at how expensive it is to rebuy my hero. Ah, it's not that expensive. Yeah, the best thing we can do is create an army on the capital that's closest to the thing we need to search. Yeah, pretty annoyed. Uh, pretty annoyed, pretty disappointed. Pretty other words that mean negative emotions. Flabbergasted. I'm slightly flabbergasted. All right. Those guys would like me to help them hunt. That's probably not happening. Unless I do a quest that gives me two crummy minor faction units. Alright. It is kind of nice that we started in a location with so much science. We're going to get through this first research age a lot more quickly than normal. Alright, Pink. Please be friendly. Roving clans. Roving clans would be good. Or maybe... Ardent mages? An ardent mage player that's not adjacent to you, that's not bad. Actually, I almost wish it was an ardent mage player who was adjacent. Not to say that the ardent, ardent mages are pushovers. They do a lot of damage with their early units. But they really don't have the staying power uh, to defend themselves all that well. Crummy, crummy, crummy. Everything is crappy. My, my attitude on this game has completely reversed. Mostly out of embarrassment. Uh, let's go this way. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this guy back around to uh, a little, keep him a little closer. Who still has moves? I'm with the sky fitted all this turn. Let's keep scouring the countryside looking for her treasures. Oh, this is this region. Yeah. 
All right, I will say that we don't seem to have access to wine. So our start's probably not going to be quite as aggressive as last time with the settling. We're going to have to be a lot more aggressive about expanding our city, though. That's important. Uh, our guys are being attacked by the red dudes, or the pink dudes, rather. Yep. That's fine. You know what? I don't need a functioning army. Screw you. Holy crap, why do you have so many guys? Oh, well, that's a settler, I guess. Hey, look, it's a break wall. Yay. Am I psychic? No, I don't think so. Okay, so... Mill Foundry now for sure. And then it's time for the altar. And the altar goes here. Picks us up. Six more industry and takes us in the direction of this next anomaly. 14 turns is not acceptable. Well, let's see what it looks like when the foundry's done. We'll, uh, we'll get a more accurate read of that number before we make any rash decisions. Okay. Can we get to this this turn? Probably. Well, it looks like we have some sort of a backyard here. Uh, we can see the red player on this side, the pink player here. They're going to both probably settle toward us because the AI always settles toward you. Not always. Frequently settles toward you. Uh, blood crystal. Okay. These uh, these resources so far from the, from the lust for loot, not really winners. All right, I want to get my altar built, and then the settler. I think so the altar's on seven turns. We can get it to five. Settling toward us. One of the cool things about Tychest is we're going to be able to settle in a place where the cities are going to be able to defend each other, which is nice for fighting off early invaders. Oh, right. I was going to move him really quickly at the beginning of the turn, so this didn't happen. Oh, hey, here's light green. I can just say green. I only put one green in the, in the game. Oh, no, go this way. Okay, it looks like pink is settling away from us. That's nice. Pink is settling into territory that will be contested by these two players. I like it. We had a wild walker here, it looks like. That's cool. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's also kind of uncool in the sense that... Get in the water quickly. <laughs> Come and get me. Uh, it's also kind of uncool in the sense that that player might get consumed the way the wild walker got consumed last game. And if that happens, it would be real bad for us. Especially if it happens, like, if pink eats them, because then we'll probably end up having to fight through red to get to pink, unless we can make friends. And I do not trust my ability to reliably make friends with these AI. I kind of can't wait until the dragon playthrough when I can just force people to be my friends, like I do in real life. It's the only way it works, man. Okay, how are we doing on this? I want to get one more citizen born and then build the settler. So this seems to be the most sensible way to go about it. It's a lot more turns than I would like, though. I mean, I guess our settler's gonna finish around turn 20-ish, probably. I'm not gonna search these ruins. We're gonna leave these for the hero. I didn't get XP. Ooh, who's this? You know what would be neat? If that was a cultist. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Well, I think we might uh, we might be in a really good position dust-wise this game. Uh, because Red is our neighbor, I'm going to en endeavor not to meet them right away. I just don't want to have to put up with the, the level of nonsense that you have to put up with when you have an aggressive neighbor. We might leave our guys right there. 
This is a lot of a lot of ruins gathered very closely together. How many of these do I think are here? I was gonna have time to search. I guess it doesn't matter if I just don't move the skyfin very far out of this area. Let's go check the coast. See what these guys want. Not to talk to me, that's what. You stay put for now. Yeah, we might just leave that guy there in the hopes that it's so distracting uh, that it keeps that uh, pink army just standing there looking at it. I don't want to run through red territory to get out, and I don't want to run through pink territory because he'll attack me. So you're just going to stay put for a couple of turns. Unfortunately, what this means, uh, us getting a settler on a pretty normal timing means that we're not probably going to be able to pacify those villages before they produce their first army. 20 influence, that's okay. This Lust for Loot is really not, not given the, the kind of rewards that I would usually like to see. You want to negotiate now? You do! Okay, I'll think about it. Let's see if we can meet Blue. Well, it's not a cultist. We can see two regions here. Go, go, go! Get out of there! Okay. So I want to scout these areas up here. I'm just gonna try to be careful. Oh, that's the next list for loot ruin. Okay, I'm gonna have the hero try to scoop as many of these as possible while this guy moves toward it. And then do a reassign. Thumbs down. Okay. Somebody's in era too. Where are we at? Not that far off. I think that's what it's going to look like. We'll pick this up in Era 2. I don't really have time for it right now. Did I get a quest from these guys? No. No, and also they're not interested in giving one. Trying to do my best not to aggravate him. Okay. We're getting a fair amount of dust. It doesn't actually help me to accelerate this building very much, because again, we're waiting on the, this citizen's birth. So... I guess we just bank it. It can be used to buy a hero or something. Alright, let's see who we got for blue. Oh! Okay, potentially a problem. They're not very close to us, but it means we have to think a little harder about any move that takes us in this direction. I am not going to bother to, in to talk to those guys, they're just going to get eaten. No sense making friends with somebody who's just about to get eaten. Let's get out of that territory. Before they eat us. Alright, so he would have to travel quite a distance to get to the bulk of our territory, which I suppose is like my only... the only saving grace. How about now? You want to talk now? No. Okay. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they want to talk right away. Again, leaving this is a thing to do with the hero. Try to get as much XP as possible on this hero. Do you guys want to give me a new quest? Okay, we can't parlay with the village that we lost to before. But we can try parlaying with the other villages. <sighs> it's not an exciting start. Uh, quite on the level of the last one, I think. But Tykes should be a really cool settle. Let's move you out. 
These guys probably also will just get eaten, but we're certainly not giving them 10 glass steel. Nope. Try to stay as far away from Red's territory as possible while still getting this done. Alright, so I have one move left. I can move this guy until he has one move and not cost us any mobility. Yeah, we can't get over there. Okay, that's fine. This this will be an okay time to reassign. Alright, we got 30 dust. We got the 20 influence. 15 gold, 15 wine. All the way back over there. Okay. I believe... I don't know this to be the fact... Uh, to be the case for our fact. But I believe that these things spawn a little further apart when you're playing an army that has extra move, like roving clans. Because uh, I think the, the distance, the maximum distance between points is calculated based on the movement of your, of your core unit. I believe that to be the case. Alright, so we want to settle away from red. After Tychus, Steven, we probably want to go out to the sea. I'm a little bummed about this. Freyheim extending so far to the north. Honestly, if if this right here were a region with a border right there, I would feel much better about settling it than settling Freyheim the way it is now. Because Freyheim's going to have a border with the Necrophages immediately. We have... Tychest. Tychest has weird... Man, we got a lot of large, oddly shaped regions perfectly designed to put us into conflict with our neighbors as soon as possible. Tychest, we want. Varius is free after that. For quite some time. And then we have the ocean, obviously. We might get two islands or something. Hard to say. Hero's coming back to here anyway, so we may as well let him have that. Let's continue to look around. All right, we're actually making some progress now, <laughs> gaining dust a little bit. I don't know that this really has the option, this start really has the option of building the museum. We have pretty low industry. Ah, damn it. He moved toward us. All right, well, the good news is that in theory, Valter troops are somewhat weak against Seekers because they're squishy and they rely on their range, and we can close distance very, very effectively. The downside, the hero's definitely not going to have time to come up here. The downside is that they are definitely a faction who will get aggressive on you suddenly, It's not like uh, Draken or something. Alright. Let's add a settler to this. If we pop this and this... Yeah. These are not actually useful. Getting us to fervent is the is the best thing they'll ever do. Okay. I don't feel too bad about that. That worked out well. Uh, let's just keep running. I guess I probably should have gone north. I don't know. Moving through the forest might actually be slower than taking a little detour. Okay, three turns. So yeah, a turn 20 settle actually looks looks like it's about to occur. And we have enough influence that we can take uh, both of the level ones that I like and then found the city. And get that benefit. Wine is nice. I don't think we have any, any real way of doing that. But I, the fact that there is wine on the map 
means that it'll be cheaper in the marketplace because the AI will just sell it. I'm fairly sure the AI doesn't have approval to manage. Alright. And we'll get to the producing nine influence naturally. I'm not going to screw up my city yields for it. As we expand the capital, it will start to produce more and more influence. Alright. So after we build Tychest, our next focus has to be... I wish it were easier to rearrange stuff in your tech tree. Or in your tech queue. Because, like, by doing that, do I lose what, what little research had accumulated on public library? I think so. Let's just wait for the settler. Well, actually, let's go stand in the settling location and uh, verify that it is indeed available to us. Looks like it. So these guys just wanted us to, fa to build here. Did we get a quest here, or did these guys not want to talk? I think these guys, these guys didn't want to negotiate. They still don't. Okay. Uh, we should probably reassemble our army. It's going to be time to fight neutrals pretty soon. First wave of them might spawn any turn now. I know that I could have bought out the settler, but I don't want to. You know what? I um I totally stopped going toward that. <laughs> I'm sure I have plenty of turns. We're fast. Three turns? Mm, a little bit. A little bit shorter than I'd like, actually. Yeah. Okay. We're fine. We're <laughs> we're fine. Everything's okay. I mean, I guess I may as well just like. Follow him up there and group up. The settler doesn't need us to babysit him. He's walking three spaces. Alright, let's go find some cool ruins with sweet loot inside of them. How about you? We still haven't found purple yet. What is with all of the things rewarding gold? Very strange. Okay. Let's see how this changes our plans. There's not a lot of interesting pearls on our hero's path. You should definitely turn around. There's a ton of pearls over here. We have a three there and a three there. Nine and eight. That's lovely. We have to power our next set of Garths with uh, with what we get this winter, so... Gonna make sure to get all of the good stuff as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's an 8. Excellent. We are up to 39. It's not bad. And honestly, our dust loss isn't even, uh, isn't even that crippling. I think I won't even bother to... to move citizens on to dust production. We'll just let the, the Empire Mint finish. We have a little bit of time for the settler before it's actually needed to settle. Okay, lost for loot. We finished it on the last turn, but we finished it. Um... Don't need to use the dust right now. The wine... or the, the gold is actually probably worth using. City upkeep is... not visible on that thing. City upkeep is... 11. 
I guess I'll hold it. It's enough to, um... I'll, I'll use it right before we drop the second city. Get maximum effect out of it. And then dropping the second city will give me enough, uh... Enough dust to chill out the minor faction in our capital. We're gonna have to fight the one neutral, or the one wandering army that they've produced, probably. But that's all right. Our guys could use a little bit of uh, combat hardening. All right, I think we just chill here. This is definitely where we're settling. Everybody else, what do you do? Uh, you can get. Those? Um, let's not antagonize red. Go this way. It can't be right to, to antagonize the only person whose border touches ours right now. Boy, we sure have a lot of glass steel. This poor Skyfin is having such a hard time searching ruins in a useful way. I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that he doesn't have hands? I think those would be useful. Alright. So let us... do this thing. Do I want to pick up... Nah. Let's do that, and then found the city. 30 approval! Immediately received 15 more glass steel. I didn't do the thing I was gonna do. Whatever, it's fine. We'll pop the we'll pop the gold booster now. Don't wanna hit the wine as well to go back to fervent. I think I do. I think we wanna stay fervent as long as possible. We've got time on those pearls. Let's let's go gift these guys a little bit of gold. Save us time not having to rebuild their village after we burn it. So now, the question is, do I think I have the time to build a fancy building? Also, would it be better to do in Tychus? Tychus is on 14 natural... Well, it's hard to compare, because Tychus doesn't have a mill foundry yet. I wish we could view the marketplace... I don't know how much a hero costs. I don't know whether it would be worth it to... Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. Well, if that delays a hero a couple of turns, I'm totally fine with it. Alright. These roaming armies have some Moonleaf that we could go get, but it's not enough Moonleaf to even use as a booster. Oh, hey, free Valiant Lightning. That's cool. We should probably get home now. We searched all those ruins. We're going to need to be in uh, home region defense mode. Come on, a hundred dust. That's nothing. Did our Skyfin whiff on three consecutive ruins? That is horrible luck. Alright. Also, I'm totally taking these pearls. There's no antagonizing necrophages. They're all they already hate you more than anyone else could possibly hate you. All right. Well, I think that's going to be it for this episode. If you're bummed out, listen. I feel you. All right, you and me, we are simpatico right now. Like this. You can't see it. I'm doing that thing with my fingers to indicate that we're close. Come back next time. We're going to we're going to get it. We'll figure it out together. I'll see you then.